Welcome everyone, I hope you're all okay today. I hope it remains that way, Daphne. Yeah, I think Vix is so afraid of COVID that even his avatar wears a mask. <laughs> Want to start us off today, Vix? Yeah, I can take it off. But one thing before Vix starts, Wendy, you might want to turn off your uh, bear uh, while the meeting's going on. Oh, that's everyone else's bear. I just saw you as the owner. On the air bear. Well, we can start. With Resolved. Some, we can start with some good news. Uh, it's uh, an update that uh, it's probably been long in this making. Uh, we still don't have a, an official timeline of when it's going to be fixed. But um, we are nearing the uh, resolution of the beta grid login access. Yay! So anyone that has been trying to uh, log in or have your information copied over, um, go ahead and, and submit a support ticket to support, and um, we will add you onto the list. You can also follow that blog for updates. So no official ETA yet. We're nearing close, and um, you know we have a list of uh, residents. Um, we're gearing to copy over as soon as we get the green light. So excellent. We're glad to see this one uh, finally resolved when it is. Oh, my, yes. That's one we've been working yeah. on for a while, and it's been so frustrating not being able to, to do that. Lucy, the main problem with the login issue is because of the copy over, so hopefully most of that will go away when this is fixed. Right. I guess I should mention, uh, although I think everyone has already spotted and taked and clicked it to get one and all of that but um, we do have a brand new concierge team Linden bear that uh, we've set out um, I'll move my mic closer is that any better Adriana um, you know feel free to click the gift box and uh, get your own copy of the bear um, if you click the bear I'll give you a bit of random wisdom from the team uh, we hope you really enjoy it yeah, you know, I know a lot of people are really into Linda Bears, so here's one from all of us. And of course, if anyone has any questions related to concierge or land, um, feel free to ask. I'll talk about the last names. On the 12th, we released another batch, and you can view those here. The name chain service is available to all premium members, as a reminder, uh, for $39.99, uh, you have the ability to change your first name or your first and last name based on the available selections. So some names um, are taken down. Um, you know they're available on a limited time basis. 
And while we can't say which names will come up in the future, um, this is actually presented kind of like a, a little bit of prestige that you're able to, you know, grab a name um, that was only available. And, um, you know, once it's gone, it may be gone forever. Who knows? It may come back. But you do have the option, let's say you, you grab a name um, because, you know, you like it and you're kind of undecided. I, I just want it now because it might be taken down. Um, you can go back to your original name. It's a separate service fee of thirty nine ninety nine, But your original name will be reserved to your account. So while you are not completely married to that new name, you can always revert it back to the original one. And, um, yeah, there you go. So it's kind of a nice, it's a nice uh, feature that's built into the naming program. Um, it's not going to, while it is a permanent name, you can always pay for a service fee to go back to the previous one. Oops. Oh, and I'd like to add one thing on that too, is that uh, if there's a last name that, um, you haven't uh, seen come up that hasn't been used before that you'd really like to use. Um, there is a place that you can suggest a name to us. Uh, there's a web, web form at that URL um, that you can, you know, suggest a name. Uh, I will add also that one of the names that's in the current list is one that I actually suggested, but I'm not going to tell you which one. Is it Engelbert Humperdinck? No, but that's a good one. No. <laughs> I am not searching for that one, Vix. <laughs> okay, okay, left one. Here's another update, just in case uh, you haven't heard. Our traffic issue is being reported as resolved. And I wanted to bring this up because just in case you are seeing um, other issues reporting traffic, like the counter is stuck at zero, um, go ahead and contact support, and we'll begin troubleshooting uh, your issue directly. Um, because while we do uh, like seeing issues resolved, we're always keep the door open in case um, maybe it doesn't stick or something else breaks related to it. So we definitely like passing the feedback along, especially with issues like this. So um, everyone can be made aware if something will take a little bit more uh, research or troubleshooting. But we definitely want to um, uh, troubleshoot your issue directly um, if you are still seeing uh, any traffic issue. And this also goes to, you know, any issue that we put up and then we say that's resolved. Um, if you see it still happening, definitely reach out to us. Did you want to talk about the new user experience? Yeah, I would. Um, we've just um, actually refreshed our new user islands, uh, our welcome islands. Uh, we're actually still beta testing, so there's still some that are the old and there's the new ones. Um, but uh, they're an all-new look. Um, they're actually really cool. I, I had the chance to look at them, and now I want to run a, a brand new avatar through them just for fun, because they're really quite nice. Um, on top of that, um, there's also a new feature that's built into the viewer. Um, that's a guidebook for new users that explains all the you should how to walk, how to chat, to and so forth. Um, that uh, they'll be able to find, you know, new users will be able to find Basically in their actual UI, not like a 
contract is. It's two days. Oh, that's really after a fun the contract's one. been approved when the earnest money has to be there. And it can be done by wire transfer. So I, I'm going to look Friday. Hey, guys. Kate, watch your microphones because some of you guys have your microphones on and we're hearing cross conversations. So it gives a great chance to eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah, I hope you get the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's important, so. No insider trading, Coffrin. Aw. But yeah, um, if you do start a new account, you you will likely get a chance to the new Welcome Island um, and, you know, the new guidebook. So tell your friends if they don't have accounts to come check it out. If you have been around for a while and want to check out the guidebook, you can also go to your Me menu, Toolbar Buttons, and select it there. Sebastian, the only people that can purchase a homestead if they don't own a full is an EDU or, or educational or non-for-profit institution. And whoops, I should have let Fix and or Wendy answer that one. That's not a land question. For sure, Missy. Ten years dungeon. Mea culpa. Neo, I'm not actually sure, but I will say probably. Um, that's outside of what I know. Um, is it you? That is a land question. Yay. Yeah. Um, I believe well, I it's take being... it from you in revenge. <laughs> I believe it is being looked into, but I have no ETA, but I will try to get more information on that. Azen, Goss, I, I do hope so. Um, I would actually take that to the server user group because they probably would have a better handle on that. Malin, the reason why um, homesteads aren't... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Vex. Oh, it's okay. Adam, um, you can go ahead and file a uh, support ticket, and we'll uh, escalate it to supervisor for review. Malin, just in case that one got uh, passed, it's just that's the policy that uh, the homesteads and previously the open spaces are expansion items, not uh, uh, sole uh, items. So that's why they're only once you own a region, a full one region at least.
Yeah, I suppose they would be uh, very popular, certainly. There was a period of time in the past with those. Um, maybe that'll change in the future, but uh, at least as far as where we are, we don't have any information on that changing right now. We shall all that keep must have been a while crossed. ago. They've always been... Uh, oh, yeah. That was more than yeah. a decade ago. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, I always like the idea of the homesteads and the open spaces, um, how they are right now, because the prim limit and the avatar limit are much lower than a full region, so they get added on to a full region perfectly, especially if, you let's say, you have a a sailing community, maybe, um, you know, kind of like a, um, maybe a city or a town where you need just extra room to kind of put out your outlying areas. Um, the full region does the heavy lifting while the homesteads and the open spaces, when you can still find them, um, provide extra uh, depth, you can say. Um, it would be a little tricky, I would say, just my personal opinion, with the homestead on its own because you probably wouldn't be able to enjoy it on its own as much as a full region. But when you combine it with the full region, um, you, you would see the full benefit of the homestead, if that makes sense. But, hey, you know, open to uh, homestead purchases, I, I can see that too. The way that it's currently thought about is the full region is kind of the part of your acreage that your house is on, and a homestead would be like your front yard or your backyard or your yeah. pond or whatever that has less prims in it but is just being used to expand your land acreage. Right. Unfortunately, no, unfortunately, regions that... won't share. Sorry, Wendy. Well, pretty much what Izzy was just saying. Unfortunately, yeah, a, a region itself, whether it's a homestead or an estate, has its own pool of, of land allotment, and you can't transfer those between the two regions or, or more regions. Uh, it's just a region is a region, and that's where all the land, land is, or all the land allowance. Well, Tommy, I know that for, at least for the time being, uh, we are still getting somewhat settled into the new location, finding out what is or isn't working for us. Um, so who knows, that might actually be a change in the future. Um, but right now, um, we're still getting to that point. You and me both, Tommy. Agreed, Sebastian. I'm seeing more and more builds using less prims, which means more room for builds, which is nice. <laughs> uh, Pantera. We haven't really talked about putting Linden trains on there, uh, mostly because we have there are so many residents that put trains uh, um, out that self-run and, and whatnot throughout the tracks and stuff that there hasn't really been a need. But if you're seeing particular tracks that are uh, underutilized or whatever, let me know and maybe we can uh, talk about that. But so far, typically that hasn't been the way our train system has worked. 
And uh, Adriana, I also want to add, the we don't have a specific ETA yet on the uh, fantasy homes. However, the word is they will be released soon. Yes, you can add the trademark after soon. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't have a specific, it's going to be released on this date. Um, but I would keep my eyes peeled uh, just in case. Um, and just for those who may not necessarily know about that, we did preview the next Linden home style uh, at the last, uh, at the SL18B, the birthday. Um, it is a fantasy theme. Uh, it also has a bunch of really kind of cool features. Uh, a lot of the landscaping and such will change look and feel for the seasons. Uh, there's even a bit of a change to how everything looks throughout the day. They're really quite pretty and quite catching, especially for anyone who loves the fantasy style. That's going to work. Um, beyond that, you know, there are still going to be other styles coming. Yes, to an extent, Daphne. And um, there's also going to be, you know, additional Linden home styles that we've already released that we're going to be releasing more of. Certainly things like the stilt homes and the uh, houseboats have been extremely popular. So we're still bringing in some of the old styles as well. And the old answer. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Vex. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead, Izzy. You got in first. Well, just so many people asking questions that we're kind of <laughs> queuing up our answers. Uh, Neo, as far as 20K and 30K, the thing is, is they're on the same so our systems, so there really isn't any difference in how much script uh, time that it can hold. So that's one of the things that we typically tell people when they're upgrading from a 20K to a 30K is, yes, it can handle more prims, but you need to kind of keep the balance going. So if you want more prims, don't think that necessarily means it can have more scripts. In fact, you probably, if you're are at the limit of what a 20K region can do and you want to add another 10K prims to it, you may have to downgrade either the agent limit or the script amounts that are in the region or whatever for a balance. As far as us uh, at further pushing... Um, more capabilities. That's always something that we're talking about, and we're always looking at increasing the capabilities of regions, but we haven't uh, gone back to the days where we charged people for a higher end system. It's just everything is getting migrated to more robust capabilities as we've moved forward. Uh, I don't know if you've been around way in the past where we used to actually charge people an upgrade fee, but that isn't something that I uh, has been talked about for a long, long time. And Adam, if you need, want to submit that ticket and get me the ticket number, I'll, I'll let me know what the issue is and I'll get it uh, escalated. But as we keep saying, it has to be uh, sent in via a ticket. Hey, I think we're actually caught up with the questions. Yay! So we should ask for more. I don't currently know of any trans a new transit system that's being brought out, Panther. I do know that there are a lot of residents that have various types of uh, transit systems, um, from you know balloon rides, train rides, bus rides, pod car rides, all that kind of stuff. So you can definitely look out. They won't go take you everywhere, but it. It's kind of like each one will take you around, you know, five to 15 regions. So it's something to take a look at. Uh, and about the previous question about new user experience, getting language localizations, it is being discussed.
In fact, I saw one the other day. A person has set up this really nice uh, train and also ferry uh, boat. Um, uh, the Zany Zin Railway, I think it was. That uh, really impressive. Whenever we have our own uh, support department meetings and I'm the host, it's on my airship. <laughs> Yeah, and one day I'm going to sneak in there and turn the whole thing physical and watch it fall to the ground. Ha ha ha. That'd be awesome. Can you add some flames too? Of course. <laughs> Arabella, yes, that is definitely the case. And we have had to ping people uh, who run some of those transit systems and go, um, hey, you know, there's a pile up of your vehicles over in this region here because it's still using some uh, scripting system from 2007. Would you mind uh, upgrading that? So periodically we do have to kind of get with those creators and get them to upgrade to what we're dealing with now. And Ray, um, first off, yes, if you want to revert to a previous name, uh, that is a charge. Uh, and the Mesh Linden Homes, those are the Belisaria Linden Homes, and there are a number of them that are currently available on the site. Um, we do run out of them from time to time, so you may not necessarily see all varieties at a single time. But uh, be patient, they will show up. Kasabian, that isn't one that I've heard about, but that might be one to also put in a feature request for because it's an interesting mid-range uh, idea. Yep, I was about to touch on that. I think a previous suggestion came up before and I didn't get to it. Um, whenever you have a suggestion, if you haven't seen any kind of uh, action on it or you, know, you just had an idea, like I want to send this in um, so you guys can review it, you want to go to jira.secondlife. Oh, where'd that go? Did I put in the right one? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I think I put that in the wrong chat. Let's try that again. Oh, there it is. This is the enter button didn't work. So when you log in, um, you should see immediately the option to, uh, it should be called um, feedback or suggestion. I believe feedback, and just follow the, the links for that, and then you'll see the fields to uh, fill in. And then we have a team that goes in and reviews the suggestions. Now, we can't guarantee what happens uh, during the review process, but at least we can get you guided to the right place. Neil, I could definitely understand that, and that's really um, something that was brought up way, way back in the beginning of uh, Linden Homes in general. Um, but the my way of kind of helping not appease that, because you're right, uh, Linden Lab does have the right to put those out there, but it's more to bring people in and keep the beginning people there, uh, because and then eventually people are going to outgrow a Linden home because it's pre-made, it's not tailored to them, they only have a small amount of prims that they can use with it, so it's really intended to keep people in their infancy still kind Coming back to Second Life as they grow and learn the huge le uh, learning curve that we all know exists within Second Life long enough to where they do learn it and then they're hungry for more and expand into other people's regions uh, and then end up renting from a lot of other guys. That's a good point. It's, it's more like just a snippet of what's already out there and being created um, by other residents.
Some of us have owl. Uh, in fact, mine's one LI, but uh, the uh, the cost yeah, is four. Mine, I think mine's only like one or two. Some of the older Lindens uh, who aren't may not even be with us at this time, obviously can't update their bears. But uh, you know, those of us we're trying to keep them low. <laughs> oh, and I've got a huge old school prim uh, Linden bear. It's probably like forty prims. To the woodshed, is he? Yeah, yeah, it's a Christmas tree, though. But I made it back in 2007, so I should be a little bit forgiven. I think that's true, Arabella. It is a fairly generic. Um, you know, it's it's trying to, to cover, you know, those who do want a fantasy home, though. Hey, Adam, I just want to say that we're not ignoring your request. We'll, we'll definitely meet it as far as escalating your concern, but we just won't be able to discuss um, your issue here um, in this forum. So if you would like, we could take it offline. We'll make sure we'll get your, your request uh, routed to the uh, proper supervisor or team for review. Would that be good? Okay, awesome. Well, yeah, it would be through the support ticket. So, you know, Izzy also recommended you can send him ticket, you can send um, me or Wendy the ticket, but it would have to be through a ticket. We have Mystic Casa if you want to repeat it. Hey, Ray True. Sorry if I meant to pronounce that. Um, full regions are available to any and all residents for purchase. Um, so, businesses and educational institutions, um, Izzy can talk more about that, which is a separate type of program. Um, but if you're just looking to become a private region owner, you can visit our land store and begin the, uh, the purchase process right away. Basically, the, for, to expand a little bit on that, full regions and homesteads are available to anybody that wants to buy one. It's just homesteads without owning at least one full region is only available to educational or okay. non-for-profit individuals. So if you want a homestead, you have to own at least one full region. If you're not an educational or a, uh, uh, or a non-for-profit, if you are an educational or nonprofit, you can buy whichever one you want. Just we give the option to get just a homestead to allow an EDU or a non for profit to dip their toe in uh, because some of them look at a virtual world and are, somebody on their company is like, oh my God, yes, we have to do this. But the admins are like, VR, huh? Why? So this makes it a little <laughs> easier for them to dip their toe uh, into our wonderful vast world. Casa that was actually asked earlier, um, not to my knowledge, but you could go ahead and submit a feature request for something like that at jira.secondlife.com. Hi, Claire. Um, so if you have full region and a homestead and you decide to drop the full region, um, that, that is your option. However, um, and this is assuming you're not on a special program, um, you would have to drop the homestead as well. So it, it is a uh, uh, prerequisite that in order to own a homestead, uh, you will have to have a full region first. So you would also receive a reply from us, let's say if you submit a ticket saying, I want to cancel my full region, we would reply back, you know, basically stating this as well. Neo about region fees, they're periodically reviewed and we have lowered them quite a few times. I remember the first time we lowered them and people were burning their avatars in effigy just over there in Linden Estate Services main building. Um, so it's definitely something that we look at very significantly before we do, um, but it has been done a few times. I just don't know uh, if slash when it's going to be done again. Um, they usually only tell us when it's going to happen 
happen. You know, let's say they've decided today that they're going to do it. They tell us, okay, it's going to happen in October kind of a deal. Ha ha ha, Naya. That's why I said it in voice. Ha ha. Yes, actually, people were angry about the region fees being lowered because they thought that it made their regions less, uh, um, the value of the regions less when they went to go sell a region. Hey, Sebastian, I wanted to touch on your uh, uh, suggestion. Um, that is more uh, akin to mainland ownership um, because you can set a limit on how much land you wish to own. Uh, let's say I only want a quarter of a parcel, you'll get charged for just that quarter, or you can continue to raise it as you build out more, or you can also lower it. So there is some customization there um, as far as how much you are willing to pay setting a limit and then going out and finding a parcel that fits that. And also uh, with that, in the past it used to, once you got up to a full region, it used to up uh, go up by uh, full or half region increments. Now it goes up by quarter region increments, so that yes. way you're not getting hit with a full half uh, if you only want a little bit more. My bad, sorry, I forgot about that gesture. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. It is. It is a great region to have a place in. I'm glad you're excited. I got the boom. Uh, I, uh, I type boom, and it just does. I forgot about that gesture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I remember when the everybody had the thriller uh, um, uh, huds on, and you just say the word on, and all of a sudden everybody's dancing around because we all forgot that we had the hud on. <laughs> Some of us still remember banana phones. Oh God, yes. Oh well. Yeah, I can honestly remember popping into a, re a region where I knew a team meeting was going on and just saying on and then teleporting out when I see them all start dancing. Sixteen fifty for a setup fee? Good lord, that's a lot of money. Sixteen seventy five was what the setup fee what used to be. Yeah. Ten thousand six hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah, for a reason. Like, yeah. I've been here almost ten years, and you guys make me feel like a newbie. <laughs> <laughs> I reach f in like I think five months. I reach fifteen years. I wish I kept my original account. It was called Neo Monday, and uh, it was a it was a charter account. I was like one of the first people in back in the day. It was like yeah, and then it was like gone. I oh, know it's gone. Yeah. Came back in 2008. That's awesome, Neo and Casa. Oh, I don't want to talk about how old my actual uh, personal avatar is. My <laughs> Linden avatar will be 15 in February. Now, my Linden avatar is only a couple years old, but my resident avatar is about 15 or so. Wait, yeah. Wendy, didn't you help build Second Life as an avatar? No comment. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I remember the Linden Post Office before they got like offline IM set up properly, and, that, and it's not there anymore. It's gone. But there was Linden Post Office, and that was that was a place. It's that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I remember rightly, the Linden Post Office used to be a down a, from the boom, one sim down across, and they put a waterway through where Smith is and Murray, and all around that area there. That's that's my stomping ground. That's where I used to hang out back in the day when I was first here. Malin, 
honestly, it really depends. There are periods where I spend, it seems like I spend every waking moment when I'm not working on my alt avatar. And then there could be three months that go by that I don't log in in my alt. So it, it's like way back in the day when I was addicted to an electronic arts game that gets mentioned from time to time that I used to play tons and tons and tons and then might leave it for eight months or a year and then a new uh, pack comes out and I would go ahead and all of a sudden go back and uh, play with it for anywhere from a week to six months. Uh, so it really just depends upon what inspiration I get. But I log in on that avatar and I know that I'm... Uh, going to be sinking a bunch of time in it for a while because the greatest thing about second life in my uh, opinion first of all the community but I what i yeah i don't know any of it <laughs> well and what i view as uh, the representation is i'm constantly exploring all these wonderful wonderful new creations that i'm like where the heck was this uh, and it's just it's beautiful what you guys come up with yeah, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a nice homestead that I've made into like a foresty fa fantasy place, and people are starting to get to know the place. And getting people coming more often now is great. You know, it's, you find it's where people are like, oh, going and check this place out. Yeah, it's lovely. I love exploring. No, it's Shana? for me. Oh, oh, uh -huh. Shana, I honestly don't know how to answer that question. Um, Wendy or Vix, do you have uh, an answer for that? No, not on, not on that, unfortunately. That probably have to be Wait, brought up at the governance Wait, team. Track of it. Oh, Which does SL have a terms of service uh, um, thing about people advertising other grids within XL? Oh, I don't think we would have a direct answer for that. Yeah, unfortunately. And to answer the question earlier, I'm actually on on my my resident alt. Um, I'd say daily, at least once, at least to check in, grab the offlines. I'm I'm always online. <laughs> I'm always around. It's like you know, if I'm not doing anything at home, you know, I'm I'm here talking to people, and it's uh, it's been great for various reasons over the years. It helped me out a lot as well. So yeah, thumbs up. And I may or not secretly come in as my I may or may not secretly come in as my alt avatar during Dunk Linden events just to have fun. Dunk us? <laughs> oh no, of course not, Vix. I would never do that. You don't know what my alt name is. I can find out. <laughs> this is probably true. <laughs> you could find one. I of thought them. we were supposed to dunk the moles, Dion. Oh, yeah, mold dunking events are awesome. <laughs> mold, dun mold dunking. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you at the snowball fight, Dion. I remember when I had some mainland, and I, 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 I didn't know why there was, like, this line of protected land going through it. There's, like, there's nothing there. It's just grass. And it was, like, before they put the road in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, Dion, be careful. I may get torn in half uh, when a mole versus Linden uh, fight happens. Tommy, the only problem I have with that is I've been hearing about Facebook making their own virtual world for such a long time that I'm not actually worried about it. Plus, there have been other virtual worlds that have come out on, you know, there's like quite a few of them out there at the moment and none of them compare. <laughs> I mean, some have, this one is great in this little niche, but it doesn't do any of the rest of the S second life does anywhere as near as good. Um, and most of them are not actually, I can't think of any of them that are anywhere as near to the capacity that second life is on user generated content. <laughs> good point. Toothless. Yeah. Uh, just a uh, follow on Izzy. I think we're so focused on improving our own world that I don't think we'll really spend, just opinionated, spend time worrying about others. We're, we're just making the best world that we can possibly make, you know, um, cultivating everything that we have here, 
um, as you know, we're here right now, you know, talking about um, you know bugs that are fixed, uh, how to send in suggestions. This is all part of you know our effort to to you know make this world as great as we can be. So I don't think we can you know spend much time saying, oh, I wonder what else is coming up that we have to worry about because we're so worried about making ours as best as we uh, best we can make it. Absolutely. And I mean, you look here, we've got what, 60 or so people that are creators, landowners, uh, and whatnot. Uh, these other ones can't even get like 20 people together at a time. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. This is an excellent turnout. I love seeing everybody. Here, here. And I would just add to, to what was just said. Um, the thing is, every time that you see a story about um, someone creating a metaverse, it so often it ends up being framed or mentioned or comes up that, well, yeah, there's there's second life and and really in a way they're all chasing, you know. We've been here and we've, and by by and large have started what is known today. Um, so really, it comes down to they're 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 behind us, you know. Absolutely. They do the, oh, my God, I can't stand that Second Life allows people to do X. I'm going to make a new virtual universe that doesn't have that problem. And they go make it and they go, oh, wait, this is hard. Um, I tried to sound so, and it, it, it just kind of killed my computer. It just, the computer was like, oh, trying to run it at the time because it wasn't very, my computer wasn't very good. <laughs> well, that, that's I, the thing, right? So uh, I'm going to for those. I think almost 16 years now, one thing that I've noticed is um, that other metaverses can't do is have the experience that Linden Labs has so far. After 18 years, like Linden Labs has done stuff that they've said, okay, that's a mistake. And those mistakes could be experience to know what to do right. I think that's what other, uh, other platforms don't have. And aside Absolutely. From that, you have the community as well. Like you can put things together oh, and say, here, build. That map's amazing. Why? Thank you, Mike. I really do appreciate that because, yeah, um, the history, the mistakes, the ability to go, oops, yeah, that was a mistake, um, and things like that is the history that Second Life has, both as a company and as a community. And when I say community, I mean the Lindens and the residents working together on things because there have definitely been times where the company has, you know, gone ahead and pushed forward on this and the community is kind of going, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. And then it comes out and it flops and we go, hey, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Or vice versa. We're like, trust us, trust us, trust us. And when it comes out, people are like, oh, okay, that's better than I thought. We learn together. And I, that is something that so many other companies uh, and their clients or customers don't do is work together towards uh, the betterment of the product experience community, etc. I've definitely seen a lot of changes over the last 13, 13, 14, 15, on 15, 16, 16. A lot of, well, anyway, yeah, it's it's just it's just been brilliant the whole time through. Any other questions? Anybody have any support kind of issues that they need? Uh, um assistance with or directions or anything like that you guys taking technical questions depending i mean if it's we'll too try. technical we might have to sidetrack over to a ticket or something like that but yeah we're right. here for you have you guys done um any updates or anything when it comes to the physics engines on the sims or on the regions or, or do you know anything of that Well, as we understand, there is some work that's being done with optimizing the configuration of our cloud sim host to increase performance. Um, one side effect to it has included uh, discovering that some meshes may have different physics impact calculation, which may be higher or lower than previously shown. Um, there is a status blog that touches on this. I'll go and if this related to what you're you're bringing up here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. That was it. So if you are seeing anything wonky, uh, definitely send in a ticket. Um, and we're seeing a couple of years come in with a lot of helpful information. So um, I'm saving those, and we'll definitely get those up. But yeah, it was raised. 
Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, regarding a technical question, um, what's the, uh, is there an update on the um, the ghosting issue with uh, objects yet at all? The ghosting issue that's always plagued us and been a problem, or the one that popped up around the time that we were moving over to AWS? Um, the, well, the, the, the old one, I know about the old one. The one, yeah, the one that, that, that uh, popped up when you were moving over to the, the uh, cloud. I believe that's actually on track for a fix, um, but it's been a while since I've seen any activity on it, so it's probably in what we call our QA process uh, to then get tested over to an, uh, a release candidate, uh, so keep an eye out, but if you can find the JIRA for it, uh, we can check and see what status it's on. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Hey, Neo. Um... Did you know that a uh, developer actually replied to your your uh, Jira? Yeah, it's public facing; everyone can view it. Um, but he, on the twenty first, he did say um, pulling this in as a possible work for the proposed texture update project. Certainly, making the blending deterministic and consistent across viewers would be an important goal there. You have more control, so they are looking at it. You wouldn't yeah, believe how bad we. Oh, sorry, Vex. You wouldn't believe how badly that plagued me when I first started out, and I didn't realize that that was on a uh, client side. Uh, so what I was seeing wasn't exactly the same as the person I was dealing with uh, on the phone was seeing. And and I probably did a probably hour-long conversation with somebody before finding out, oh, no, he's seeing a, a, a randomized thing uh, that may not be the same as you. I'm like, oops, let me call him back. <laughs> I remember the, the bug that, that that was around in 2009, 2008, where you would log in and find your attachments attached to your rear end, like your shoes and your hair would be like attached in weird places. That never <laughs> happened to me, and there are no pictures out there of it. Same. <laughs> I wanted to make a point of this because I think um, what Neo did and the end result so far, uh, I think, shows that the, the system is working. Um, when Neo did, and we see we receive a lot of um, ideas here, and we route them to the uh, the feature section. But uh, what Neo did, he put in a new feature request. He explained it in great detail, um, his idea and how it can it can be beneficial. And um, it was reviewed by a developer and responded to. Now we can't guarantee that you know it get implemented, but I think it shows you this is the system that we have in place is the perfect way to send your idea to the right people for. For review, so just because we con we constantly you know defer to the new feature request, it's because that is in place to review your ideas. So it, it definitely does get looked into. Absolutely, I mean, it, like in other companies, it would be a punt. You know, oh, I don't want to right. deal with that. Send it in as a Jira. Not the case. And you'll see a lot Not of here. us will watch ones uh, that we see come in that we're really interested in, such. So definitely, definitely. But also at the same time. Please, please, please periodically look back at yours if you're not watching your email uh, for uh, updates, because if one of our developers asks a question and it never gets answered, they'll drop it, uh, you know, as not being able to get more information on it. So definitely try That's to keep point. up with yours. Hey, Richard, that's part of an endeavor that uh, is being worked on. Uh, there's snippets that are in the login. Um, I'm not sure if it's based directly on existing avatars or kind of like an algamation of one or like just a creation of what avatars can look like. Um, that would be cool. I haven't seen that one before. Um, I've seen a couple of the other ones here and there. But I'm not sure if it's a, uh, like an imitation from something that's existing or we recreated it. Most typically, that's a um, issue of the parcel being overwhelmed uh, and items being returned, but you may want to submit a ticket when it happens, specifically saying, hey, res this, which was the last thing that was resed uh, on such and such a date time. 
and on such and such date time this and this and this uh disappeared so then we can actually look in with specifics to see uh what may have caused it almost all of the time it has to do either with a new item resing that put it over the agent limit or with um uh, different temp resers uh, with the parcel being too high up. Audi agent limit as far as what agent limit on most mainland parcels is 44 uh, on a private island it can go all the way up to 100 so yeah um, it's the max amount of avatars that are allowed in a region but what I had been talking about previously was um, the parcel limit for prims. Is the agent limit on a homestead still uh, 30 or 28? I thought it was 20, Vix. Did Homesteads that are 20. Actually, it's yeah. 25 with premiums. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense then, because I, I, I've often got over 20 people on my sim when I've got an event on and whatnot, and I can still get in and out regardless of the sims fill up or not, because I'm obviously the estate manager. Estate managers and the region owner, yeah. Well, we have a few minutes left here. Um, this has been an excellent forum. Thank you, everyone, for contributing and bringing your questions and, and suggestions. Here. Uh, if you had anything um, that's still kind of percolating in your head, go ahead and drop it now. We'll make sure we get it answered. How often do you guys do these meetings? Once a month. Uh, last, also, last Wednesday of the month, or the fourth Wednesday of the month at noon. Also, one other thing, and I would say probably 90% of you guys already know this, but if your region's having a physics issue and you've got a dance club uh, in your uh, place and your dance club is on the ground, uh, for you Skybox Dance Club, sorry, nothing I can do about that, but I have found that uh, lately a lot of people haven't gone back to the old adage of making their ground just underneath the dance club, having the dance floor be just barely above the ground but having it be phantom that prevents all of those colliders from happening on one object which will greatly help performance good to know you just change the texture to the region settings to uh to an alpha texture no no i just i make the object phantom instead of uh physical so that way they're not actually walking on the object they're walking on the ground underneath it but they it looks like they're walking on it because you know that's what they see and it's only slightly oh, okay. above the ground level the ground is much better at handling collisions than one big 40 by 40 floor yeah. that's technically one texture that 80 people are dancing on yeah there's less calculations involved I just like to throw that out there periodically because sometimes people forget them. Neil, are you trying to end our meeting now? <laughs> Anything that you can do there, Neo, helps. Um, but the uh, Phantom 4 is the best option. It's just obviously not always possible because of the fact that you're... Um, sometimes not in a place that you can go ahead and do that. I can see the four 10 by 10s working as if, if we're talking about a, a, a dance floor in which the concentration is on maybe certain, but you'd still run into them interacting with a texture and the calculations at the end of the day. Yeah, it would be slightly better than a 20 by 20, but not as good as the Phantom Floor. Yeah, are we talking about te text refreshing? Actually talking about physics and objects. Oh, fair enough. I'm th thinking about this now. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. <laughs> so if you have one large um, plane down object, right? 
and you have multiple avatars on that. You say you have five avatars on one large prim. It's calculating all of those avatars on that one prim, and it's sending that physics to it. But if you broke that down and had one avatar on each separate prims all put together, it would come up with a different calculation. Is what That's correct. Yes. In general, yes. lower. Right, because of the fact that for whatever reason it does expand uh, when you have 10 avatars on one prim rather than 10 avatars on 10 prims. Um, and the way I try to explain it, I am not a programmer uh, like I used to be way back in the day, um, but the way I try to explain it is if you're resing textures, 10 um 10k textures are, are is easier for a computer to process than one 100k texture okay right, yeah, that's for what it's enough. worth this also is why for some of you have been around for a while you'll remember um, all the issues with mega prims and whether they were allowed and mm -hmm. the fact that you could make a large prim um, that's part of why was because with the really large mega prims the, at the time especially it caused a lot of physics issues so that's why those were, those restrictions were in place at that time. Uh, as performance got better, we did re relax those somewhat. Oh, that's why you'll assume. still see performance issues with that. Someone could assume that a mesh floor would cause even more of a physics issue, yeah? It can. Okay. Yeah, that can also depend on the physics shape. Absolutely. It would be kind of like the difference between a flat uh, uh, texture or a flat uh, object and a like torus prim uh, object as to how physics would work with it. Obviously, that's not a direct correlation, but it gets, gets you in the right mindset. Well, I've got to go. It was very, very nice talking to you three and everybody else here. Likewise, it's just about the end of our time here, so... Have an amazing day, everybody, and stay safe, and I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy these meetings. And thank you, Izzy, for stopping by. Uh, your contributions Absolutely. are always welcome. It's, it's an awesome conversation when right. the three of us get together. I talk to people, and they go, oh, I've never met Lyndon before. Well, you can go to the meetings. They're open. You can just go, you know. <laughs> can I accept your yeah. mail? Thanks, Thanks everybody. Take care.